Hi everybody, we're doing a Disney Q&A and I'm not doing it alone. That's fun. <laughs> we're doing a Q&A, we're not on MC Magic because we're in the real world and we're gonna answer questions about Disney. Yeah. Disney parks and movies and history and all those questions that you throw my way, um, except we're gonna split them up this time. And let's just jump right in. I'm gonna I'm gonna start over here. Nat Nat Dancer eighty three zero zero one asks, "What would you think if they put Disney characters in It's a Small World in Disney World? I know Disneyland Paris and Disneyland have them, such as Alice in Wonderland in England, Mulan and Mushu in China, Woody, Jesse, and Bullseye in North America. Thanks and have a magical day. What do you think?" Um, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I didn't even know that they were in the other parks. But that's a cool so... idea. Yeah, I don't see right. why not. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to be completely honest. They probably haven't been on It's a Small World since the time you and I, Whoa. and I can't remember. Devin. Yes, and we kind of made fun of the entire ride. <laughs> we did a Mystery Science Theater-esque yeah, and commentary I think, throughout it. I think everybody on the boat hated us so That's much. okay. Um, but that was, that was like 2007? Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, maybe that would bring me back on that ride. If you, if, if somebody said to me, all these characters were on there. Now, do you think, I haven't seen it, but apparently it's happened. Do you think they're in It's a Small World style? Like it's Oh, a, I hope so. That would be awesome. And why don't they sell plush of that? That was my first <laughs> thought. Why don't they sell the, like, the plush and the uh, little like, figurines yeah. and stuff? Maybe they're thinking well, about it. Well, we're going to find out. I so. come up with so many ideas to make Disney money, and I get nothing in return from them. But Hint, hint. Yeah. Hey, Disney, if you're watching, you know, it's Just a big entity. Use one of my watching. ideas. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Effect Reverse asks, with the closing of the Magic of Animation area, I heard they might be soon closing down One Man's Dream. I know you're a fan of change, but I will be sad to see this overlooked museum close. If it does close, what do you think will happen to the stuff in the museum, and how do you think they will keep the history of Walt Disney the man alive? Okay, well, we You already... sounded so sad yeah, at the very mention that this was a possibility. Because we talked about it yeah. in my in our your last top, top three. It was your top one? It, yeah. Yeah. It was my number one of educational so you'd be things. And I don't know. I mean, I know it's often overlooked, so I could see why they would want to close it. Because right. I feel like nobody goes in there. Um, but it's a shame that nobody goes in there because there's so many cool things in there. Um, yeah, I think that that's, I don't even know. That's my question. Where would they put everything? What do you think they would I do? think, here's my idea. I just thought of this, and it's a great idea, and Disney should do it, is, well, for one, I think it makes sense that it's closing. It hasn't been announced, but I think it absolutely could, I have to stop hitting the mic. It <laughs> absolutely could happen. And I think because they're closing the magic of animation, and you've got Pixar Place there, there's just this thing in the way that would prevent a total expansion of the area in the way. it's just in the way so i can see it happening for sure why not put it in downtown disney they just announced they're closing disney quest Th yeah which, put something there riddance, and but... expand on it yeah i know right about time it was a decade too late <laughs> um that's actually kind of smart because i feel like Downtown Disney sometimes doesn't have enough actual Disney exactly. to attract people. But if you had that, more people would take it. Right. And I think as much as I love the museum aspect of it, yeah. it would make sense outside of a theme park where people are, admittedly, they're going there for yeah. rides and fun and yeah. you're not looking for that totally educational um, experience. So, like, give it a, give it that whole Disney Quest building yes. that was four floors of just, like, Disney Museum. Maybe not just him, but just Disney Museum. Yeah. The ultimate Disney Museum. Put it there. I just did a revisiting Disney episode in a Q&A like episode. I wasted, I wasted the opportunity. Forget all of that. I'm going to do that separately. Well, if we know Disney, <laughs> they will do something with it. Like, Hopefully. they never get right. rid of anything, by right. the way, ever. Um, that stuff is backstage, I can tell you. Um, so they will definitely have plans for it either way. Yeah. Our next question comes from Beefish Alex Imagineering, who says, uh, when was the park hopper option added slash included the Disney parks experience? Did it happen to have been created when Eisner built MGM Studios as a purposeful half day park to get a little bit more money out of people if they wanted to switch parks in the middle of the day? If not, what was it and what are your, th when was it? Wait, if not, what was it and <laughs> what are your thoughts? Um, I believe I had heard you speak positively about the park hopper option and I'm an advocate for it too. Yeah. Park Hopper is awesome. Yeah. Park Hopper is like a mental trick. I'm a fan of the Park Hopper because if you use the Park Hopper and you go to a second park throughout the day, 
even if you go back to them later, it just breaks it up. It yeah. makes it feel like it's two days instead of one, even um, though that's not true. I, I was just having this conversation at work because I have some work friends who are going for the first time ever, mm -hmm. which, you know, as a veteran is exciting for me. You just want to jump on them and be like, let me tell you all you the just, things. You just, like, slap maps on the table <laughs> yeah. and roll them out, and you're just like, all right, listen, you're going to start here. But that was the first question was, should we do park hopper? And yeah. I was like, yes. Yeah, and they were 100%. like, how much more is it? I was like, it's like, negligible. it's like $50, like, it's, I think, it's, to yeah, the total it's cost. It's not like a per day. Yeah. worth it. I was like, guys, if you don't do park hoppers, you're doing Disney wrong. Yeah. Like, that's, that's Which, I mean, there are no, people. You're no, they're doing Disney wrong. <laughs> okay, never mind. We're doing it wrong. As for the historic element of your question, uh, we actually did a little research into this. And so, like, park hopper existed as a concept before it was called park hopper. In 1982, there was a ticket called the Four Day World Passport, and the idea was back then it was just Epcot and the Magic Kingdom, and it was four days that you could go to either park as much as you wanted. Yeah, and then there was the Four Day Super Pass, which replaced it in 1991, which is actually, that is the year that MGM opened, yes. correct? Yeah. Um, and so that was, what, the three parks that there were, yeah. plus... Typhoon uh, Lagoon. Typhoon Lagoon, Pleasure Island. And Discovery Island. And Discovery Island and um, Ka River Country. Yes, correct. So it's so similar. So still the same concept. Um, obviously, they changed it around with the addition of MGM, but it still existed before it. Right. And then in 1994, it officially became the four-day park hopper, which, again, uh, at concept, same thing. You could switch between the parks as much as you wanted to. Um, I don't know if at that point it was, I think that was, it was like you bought a four day park hopper ticket. You didn't like add the option on the way you do now, where it's sort of like you piece together these things. It was, you bought a four day park hopper. Yeah. I don't think from what we were looking at that there were any options for less than four days. Like yeah. what you could do now, you could yeah. literally buy a one day park hopper if you wanted to. Right. Um, which, which makes sense because Eisner's whole motive was to get people to stay longer because that's when they expanded on the hotel business and you know their goal became get you to spend a week at Disney. Sure. So. But now they still do that because the more days you get, the less right. it's it like actually is additional. It's like five bucks after yeah. a week to add so. another day. And I'm really tempted to add another day to my Disney trip. We've been talking about this. He's leaving maybe. a day earlier than I am and he's like, maybe I should add a day Maybe on. I'll just throw a day on. Add a day. Maybe. maybe. I'll just, maybe. I'll hitchhike back to New York. Whatever. Maybe I'll just live at Disney. Like in Disney. Yeah. Like, like not outside yeah. of just like just bathe bathe in the the uh, Jungle Fountain Cruise. of Nations. <laughs> sleep in uh I don't know, isn't the Fountain of Nations just recycling the same water? I don't that's Well, it's big me. enough. It's one person. Sleep in Ellen's Energy Adventure because nobody will catch you there. Just roll off in the dinosaur scene and sleep in the bushes. <laughs> you could do it. Our next question comes from Tina Nice Nias. Nice? I want to say it's niece or it's niece? or it's it's niece. I don't know. I want like Gary Sinise, but not <laughs> Tina niece. <laughs> Gary Sinise's niece, Tina niece. Uh, I have a question. I want your opinion on how Disney is using so many new things like Star Wars and adventures in their parks. I, for one, want to see more Disney. I feel it's terrible that they just buy Star Wars and create rides and stuff. And there's actually Disney stuff like the classic films that have very little representation in the park. For example, Tarzan, Hercules, Monsters, Inc., Up, Pocahontas, and even The Incredibles. I, for one, would think Walt would be upset to see how distant the park has grown from what he started. Disney is not just Disney to me when I see the Avengers superhero in Star Wars. I know you feel change is important, but I feel like these great Disney films are being pushed to the side. Thanks, and I would love to hear your thoughts. Keep up the great videos. So I find it interesting because I think the answer to this question is in the question itself. Because when you listed all these movies, you included Monsters, Inc., up and the incredibles which are pixar movies which up until recently disney didn't actually own they were partnering and they created those movies through pixar it was a partnership it was a distribution deal mm -hmm. but you think of them as disney movies right. and i think part of that's time part of that's branding and i think over time you're gonna have a generation that grows up that looks at star wars and avengers the same way where you just naturally lump them in there uh, yeah, absolutely. Because for me, we grew up in the era of all the classic, like, you know, late 80s, early 90s Disney. And when Pixar came around doing Disney films, I felt a little weird at first thinking of them as Disney. Right. And now I do because time has passed. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's exactly what Rob said. Um, people are just going to grow up and just Star Wars and Disney are just going to be synonymous. Right. Um, 
But I do agree that I do think that sometimes there, it, it's not so much that I don't feel there isn't enough Disney. I feel like there isn't enough of an overall representation of some of their classic stuff. As Rob knows, I am a huge fan of Hunchback. I will talk about this to the day I die. Um, I literally spent one trip walking around looking for anything at all with Hunchback. And we found like one little window in like the world of the Disney store. I that picture was, like, you a... just like wandering around like, yeah. Hunchback? <laughs> Hunchback? <laughs> Quasi, where are you? And, and I get it, you know, not as popular as obviously like some of the other films, but I think even if there was just more of an overall representation of, like I said, Hercules and Tarzan, right. um, maybe people would feel more like you could have that balance of that and you can have the balance of Avengers and Star Wars and all of that as well. Great question. I don't think Walt would be disappointed. I think, one, I think Walt would be amazed that the company's still around this this many years later and still operating like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Walt's, Walt's his his work ethic was he found really talented people and he he kept them in the Disney family and he depended on them to create these ideas right like he wasn't writing the songs he had the Sherman brothers who were doing that and he just trusted that they were talented enough and I think Iyer to an extent is doing that it seems a little different because he's buying the talent but the idea is essentially the same he's finding talent he's bringing in stuff that we already love as classics and i think over time it'll just become one big disney thing yeah i look at big hero 6 i mean that's marvel technically yeah yeah and i think was, a lot of like kids the are gonna first yeah. movie that was really like disney marvel animation yeah um and that was like a really big deal and it was really great and i still want to see san francisco somewhere in the park Just hollywood like, studios yeah. in the new york street uh, our next oh, question. That's such a good idea. I know. I've thrown so many out there. <laughs> Disney, why aren't you using them? There's so many. Next question comes from Daryl. Um, I'm going to say this in my best. This was written so formally, so I need, it, it I was. feel I need to. I don't have a top hat. Or a monocle. <laughs> Hi, Robin Christine. As you may encounter upon your next trip to Disney World, you may find that many of Hollywood Studios' attractions are closing or planning to close. Do you think there will be an announcement regarding the revamp of the park soon? Because now seems to become quite crowded with so little to do. P.S. My family has a trip uh, to Disney planned uh, later this summer. I have broken my femur and won't be able to walk until then. So I'll need to rent a power scooter. Uh, do you have any tips for people traveling with handicaps uh, slash power chairs? If you do, it would be greatly appreciated. So uh, first part of the question, uh, D23. Right? Oh, yeah. I probably. think that's where they're going to announce it. At this it. point, so many people have been talking about it. There's yeah. been like, so many theme park like and Disney blogs that are just like giving their own ideas of what's going to happen. I think now is the time for Disney to be like, okay, here's the official plan. Um, it's still going to obviously take a while. You know how they do things. It'll probably be rolled out in parks. But I think at this point, we're ready. We're yeah. ready for the news. And so. that'll be late summer. So they'll be really ramping up the, the media hype for Star Wars. So they'll, right. they'll be perfect time to announce all the Star Wars stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to your second part of the question, um, I mean, I don't know if there are really a lot of tips required. Honestly, the one tip to keep in mind is just watch where you're going. Make sure you're not like slamming into people, you know. But besides yeah. that... Uh, you know, it depends on, you're going in the late summer, so I don't know how the crowds are going to be, so you just need to be, uh, I guess, a little mindful of, of where you're driving. It's like driving a car almost. Yeah. Watch where, um, you're, watch where you're driving and you'll be fine. I will say that Disney is one of the greatest places to go if you need a scooter or yeah. if you're handicapped or anything like that because cast members are phenomenal. Um, so I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable and, you know, they'll take care of you. Going on rides, just they usually, like, you on i guess isn't yeah it like, it's it's oh, usually like side entrance or like PV exactly exit or, yeah. yeah so just be mindful of that where you might have to go like when you actually are heading to a ride yeah um but don't do donuts yeah that's no, probably bad don't do, do, do donuts just don't, do them in the parking lot yeah that's a good idea <laughs> but do them away from where the cars are because that could be dangerous yes. <laughs> our next question comes from daniel burns how would you define classic disney i like this question a lot I want to hear your answer first. Well, I feel like this is going to reflect a lot of my age. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because because my, my, my first thought was classic Disney for me is all the hand-drawn animation. Okay. That's classic Disney for me. But then when I thought about it, I thought, well, I mean, I also think like classic, I think The Lion King and things like that. But then I think like, oh, but my mom would think like Snow White, which right. is going even more classic. 
And then if you want to go super duper way back, you're like at like Steamboat Willie oh, and stuff that's, like yeah, that. Yeah, that's very classic. So I, I feel like, um, but it's funny because when I thought of it immediately, my first thought was Beauty and the Beast and all of that. But that's interesting. Only, that's only early yeah. 90s. Well, late 80s if you consider like Little Mermaid and stuff like that. So I had to take a minute and be like, wait, but there's like so many other years of stuff. So I think a lot of it has to do with like what you grew up with. Yeah, I think. Uh, I, I mean, for me, Disney's like a sandwich. It has layers, and you have... You, for me, Disney, classic Disney is up until the death of Walt Disney. Everything he had a hand in, to me, I consider classic Disney. So, you know, Snow White, Steamboat Willie, all of that stuff. There's an era, you know, that's the bread of the sandwich. Maybe it's like a panini. No, maybe it's like an open face sandwich because there's no bread on the like top. Like a tuna melt. Yeah, like, like a tuna melt. Tuna like melt. an open face. Yeah, I don't like tuna, so let's change that. To I like, like a, tuna. That's We're keeping gross. it as it, tuna. Tuna smells, and we'll, we'll, we'll just call it an open face. How about a um, how about a burrito bowl? Right, the okay. rice is your Disney, your classic Disney. And then the beans layer, which <laughs> farts and smells, is that era. <laughs> Between the death of Walt and the onboarding of Eisner. So you had Miller and you had all these like old school Disney executives who are still trying to live in the world of what would Walt do. And you have Robin Hood. You have movies like that. Uh, then you have the Eisner uh, era, which would be like your uh, sour, sour cheese and cream. Your <laughs> sa- best part of the burrito bowl, <laughs> Your cheese and sour cream, right. Um, and that's where you have your renaissance, which is, I guess, it's a term of films I call it like the Disney renaissance, your Little Mermaid and your Beauty and the Beast. Um, and then I guess Bob Iger's The Guac? I don't like guac. I don't like guac either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we're taking the analogy a little too far. Yeah. I, it's just, then there's that next era, which is the acquisition era. And right. it's Star Wars, it's Marvel, it's Pixar right. getting on board. And so that's the sort of four um, epics I would call that's Disney. Very- uh, I would love to hear what other people think. Like, that's one for the comments. What do you consider Disney classic? Uh, this video is sponsored by Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> our next question comes from, our last question comes from Jacob Schmidt, who says it was announced today the banning of selfie sticks in both Disney parks starting June 30th. Do you have an opinion on this? Yeah, my opinion on this is good. <laughs> Good riddance, uh, yeah, selfie sticks. Yeah, I, I was actually really on top of this when this was happening. Um, because first it was that there were just signs on the rides. Right. Specific roller coasters and things like that that said, please don't use your selfie sticks right. on rides. Um, and then it came out, I was reading an article, I think it was in Forbes actually, that was like, hey, Disney's going to completely ban them from the parks altogether. Can't even bring them in. And then... I read an interesting thing on Reddit from a cast I saw that member. too! Yeah. The cone of protection, yes. or the whatever, the yes. sphere of protection. Yeah. I was about to and, mention that. And then, do you want to talk more about that? It's so, uh, when a ride's designed, there's, it was the cone of protection? Was the, the cone, called? it's the a The cone. cone of protection <laughs> is the space around a ride vehicle in which it should be theoretically completely safe and you cannot touch anything. And they put these really cool giant circle thing on the vehicle and they slowly ride it through to show that nothing will touch that area so you know you're not going to in theory get your hands slapped off when you're on big thunder mountain or something uh and the problem is when you use a selfie stick you are now extending your reach three plus feet and now you have something that is outside of the cone of protection and that could cause uh, people getting hurt themselves, people hurting other people when that thing gets smacked out of their hand. Mm-hmm. There's been a story of like a, a roller coaster that derailed because something fell out and it's fell a on a rail. Right. Yeah. And they said so, it was closed for three hours just from a backpack yeah. falling. Um, but in the end, I think he said like the real problem was, um, you know, they were fine with just saying don't yeah. use it on rides. It was just people weren't listening. They weren't listening. So they ended up saying, sorry, you can't bring them at all. Yeah. Um, Here's I, the thing. Disney is the... I get the premise of selfie sticks. We live in an age where nobody owns a camera anymore. They have a phone that costs hundreds of dollars. And so are you going to give it to a stranger and ask them when they could just run away with it? That's if you're visiting, what, like here? Even here, it's not going to happen a lot. But like, no. I understand there's a mistrust and maybe that's why people use selfie sticks and or they just don't want to. But like in Disney, that is one, like probably one of the safest places in the country for this. And any cast member will be happy to take your photo for I, you. I think the idea, yeah, it is kind of silly because 
the idea is, well, if I do this, I'm not going to get as good of a photo as mm -hmm. if I'm three feet out doing this, but then you could just, just ask it some, to somebody. Yeah, just ask like, somebody. Yeah, I mean, I, I never got the whole selfie stick phenomenon. I will never own one. I personally don't feel the need to have one. Um, but I, I'm actually all for it. It's a shame yeah. that it had to end up being a full ban. But I'm kind of happy when I go there. Do you think selfie them. sticks are going to be like Tamagotchi where like in five years we're like, remember when everyone had selfie sticks? Do you know they're bringing them back? They're they never Tamagotchi went back. anywhere. Well, well, no. I mean like, <laughs> like, oh, what's the company? And now this is going to bother me. But I was literally just reading an article uh, that they're like bringing them back into stores. To was it Hasbro? Yeah, no, but like I figured the stores Hasbro. that's going to sell them. Um, I bought my sister a Tamagotchi like two years ago. I, they have like Wi-Fi Tamagotchis and everything. They're crazy. I did not have a legit one. I had oh, you a had a digi, digi pet? No, I didn't have a digi pet. Those were good too. A dinky dino was one of them. And the other one was a penguin. That if you didn't feed him properly, he turned into a very evil, angry looking penguin. Okay. That's I had a Tamagotchi. And then I remember when they banned them from elementary school. Remember when they started saying you can't bring them in anymore because we're getting so distracted by them. So I left my Tamagotchi home that I had kept alive for like over a week, which back then was huge. <laughs> and I said, Mom, you need to babysit my Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> and she let it die. And I came home and I was so angry. I was like 10 years old. And I was so angry. And my mom was like vehemently apologizing to me. She was like, I'm so sorry. I just meant to like go make lunch. And I forgot all about it. You know, and she tried to like was... start a new Tamagotchi. She'll never notice. Let me just no, set up. No, when I but opened it, it, it was just surrounded by like poop. And it was like dead. <laughs> it's a good, it was the lessons of life. <laughs> I, I don't remember not being able to bring my Tamagotchi. Yeah, well, and we went to the same class. school. I, it, it was in sixth grade, Miss Ban them, I think. No personal names. They're gonna track us down. Oh, well, we're gonna have to bleep it out now. <laughs> and that's gonna sound like your sixth grade teacher was a curse name. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, thank you all for the questions this week. These are awesome questions. Um, before we go, we have more details regarding our meetups because we're both going to both Disney's, which is awesome. Yeah. And I, it's like next month. This is like the most epic. It's year like next ever. month. It is. That's crazy. It is. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a Disneyland meetup on Saturday, August 22nd in Disneyland by the castle at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Probably the one and only time I will actually anchor an event to Pacific Standard Time because it makes sense. In fact, let's, let's also say we're going to have the meetup in Disneyland at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> you do the work on that. And then we're going to Disney World. We are. Um, so we're going to have that meetup on Saturday, September 26th. In the Magic Kingdom, we're gonna meet up at the Hub. Um, okay, wrote high noon, high noon, guys. We're gonna have a duel in the Hub at yeah. Disney World. Be prepared. Um, yeah. So Saturday, September twenty-six, noon. Meet us there. The Dapper Dans are gonna be like on Main Street, and they're, they're just gonna hear the jingle of the Spurs at high noon, and they're just they're, gonna, they're like gonna close whistle the, doors. the yeah. whistle. Yeah, and then they're gonna like all hide and close the doors, and it's just gonna be like dead on Main Street, and that's where the meetup's gonna happen. Uh, so we hope to see you there. Uh, we're definitely gonna be um, recording video of it. She introduced me to Periscope, which is probably the coolest and worst thing I could be introduced mm -hmm. to. Yeah, I might be Periscoping our actual meetups, and we'll see if I Periscope some of our other vacation stuff. So are you I Ivy Winter YT on Periscope? Because it's yes. Twitter linked. Yeah, it's I'm Rob Plays Twitter. on Twitter on uh, Periscope. So you can follow me now. I'm not actually Periscoping anything, but we probably will for these things. So yeah. it'll be fun. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Whatever you're doing, have a great week, and we'll see you next time for the next Disney Q&A. Bye, everybody. Bye.